सब्सक्राइब कीजिए स्टार एंड प्रोटेक्ट चैनल को और बेल आइकन को दबाए लेटेस्ट वीडियो अपडेट पाने के लिए Today I want to give you an update regarding the big CNC mill. Right now, this big semi truck is arriving and I learned a lot about international logistics while organizing this transport. Now the big CNC is on its last meet to the workshop and that's quite a glorious moment. So somehow this is some kind of unboxing video but for a very large box. Right now we are in front of the Cardos maker space. What's Cardos you may ask? Cardos is an independent non-profit aid organization financed through donations. Cardos provides emergency medical and technical aid in crisis and war regions. They design, build, deploy and operate the facilities themselves to provide first aid or primary medical care. Currently Cardos is on a mission in Bosnia providing medical help to refugees. To be able to design and build these facilities, Cardos is operating a maker space dedicated to this task. So let's talk about this huge box that is being unloaded right now. Cardos and me struck a deal. They will host the machine and pay for it while I organize everything around it from having it made in China to loading it in a container, shipping the container to Hamburg, then loading the machine on the truck and until now where it finally arrives at the Cardos maker space. I will continue to help install it and teach the people from Cardos how to operate it so they can make parts for mobile hospitals with it. In exchange, I can cut all the parts for the page turning open source book scanner LibreFlip on this machine if it ever comes to the point where I start to make kits of LibreFlip. Please note, you don't need a CNC to make LibreFlip. LibreFlip is optimized to be made with as little tools as possible. The CNC is only necessary if one wants to make more than one quantity of parts, for example for kits. The box is really big, it fits just barely through the door. Now, let's get to the unboxing part of this video. First, we had to remove some plastic foil. The auxiliary components of the machine have to be taken off before we can continue with the unboxing. We are using these fancy crowbars with the red tips, and they are special equipment for first responders, not normal crowbars. This is quite an opportunity for the crew to train the application of such destructive but potentially life-saving tools. Now this machine needs to be moved in its corner. And we have to do this by hand, because the forklift would not be able to move around in this corner. Unfortunately, we only have one pallet truck, but we also have a lot of wooden blocks, some creativity, and one dolly. And we are operating all of these tools well beyond their maximum capacity. The floor is very uneven and we are stuck behind the ledge. We can't push the machine over the ledge. We have to pull it. So we need to exchange the pallet truck and the dolly and put the pallet truck on the right side of the machine. With the wooden blocks we can extend the maximum lifting height of the pallet truck, which was necessary for the final move. Bam! There is the machine. Today, a couple of days later, I had some help that didn't want it to be filmed and I preferred that instead of not having the help. So sorry for that, you didn't get to see how I adjusted all the feet and um, put the machine down uh, and made it yeah, flat and horizontal, this surface here. Let's go through some of the features. Up here, over here, we have the big spindle. That thing is what drives the cutting bit down here. Over here, this is where the cutting bit goes in. This whole unit is the motor that actually drives the mill bit that cuts things. 
and um, this thing is cooled with water. Water is running through here and pu being pumped through, through it with these tubes. It doesn't have any air cooling, so all the heat that's generated inside this powerful motor is being taken out of the system with these uh, tubes. These other tubes are for lubrication, I figured out. There are these handy pump handles on the sides. This is this one of those pump handles. If I pump it like this, then I distribute oil through the system and then it ends up dripping from here. No, not really. It's, a, it's the block that distributes the oil to all the bearings and um, other parts. Look here, there goes some oil into this part. So this pretty brilliant, I think. Like, looks, looks like a good and solid construction to me. But there is still a lot of work to do. So the next, next uh, steps are that we need to hook up the dust suction. Look here. This, this end isn't hooked up yet to anything. And over here is the unit that will uh, suck the dust, but it's not hooked up to a power or, uh, and um, no tubes are hooked up yet as well. This working surface is a vacuum table. Through these holes, air is sucked out of the system. And over here are these rubber bands. And I can lift these out, let me show you, like this and form a different shape in the surface, like this, to make a zone where we suck the air out from between the part and the vacuum table to just hold the sheet where it belongs, but only in those areas that won't be cut through, so I can limit the, the, um, the vacuum. So this is, this is, up here is where the computer will go, like here we need to install a, a screen, and down here, is where the actual PC will go. We already have a cable here, a USB cable, to hook up the, the driver boards. And down here we have a big uh, transformer that transforms 240 volts to roughly 90 volts, which uh, controls, uh, which is the power for the stepper drivers. And then we have this unit that uh, controls the spindle that holds the tooling.